20. We're talking a three round super flex mock draft, uh, tight end premium actually, I should add, like usual. Um, we haven't done this in a little while, and you know, a, a lot has changed recently. We've gotten the pro, pro, um, pro day results, we've got combine testing and all that stuff. Um, you know, some draft capital projections have changed, so we figured we might as well do it. It might be our last one before uh, the actual draft. So Frank will be, you know, we'll, you'll be able to see it for you guys. Um, so yeah, let's just get into it. We're doing a snake draft order where the order starts Lunas, myself, then Frank and Jake, and then we'll flip it and we'll just go through those three rounds and we'll try and explain our picks to you guys. So Lunas, kick it off. Who you draft in pick 101? Trevor Lawrence. Again, guys, don't overthink it. Like, I feel like sometimes, like, when there's, like, too much time before the draft, people just start overthinking, switching up rankings. It, you can you can debate two and three, but take Trevor Lawrence at one. That's, don't overthink this pick. All right, well, that puts me at 102. And it's the guy that I've been banging my fist on the table for a while now. I, I actually believe if I have pick 101... I'd be willing to trade down and just see what I could get from the 102 owner. Um, anything of significant value, I think I might consider doing it and just take Justin Fields at 102. At 102, I want Justin Fields. I just think he does everything right. Um, you know, plus he does have that. Not that Trevor Lawrence doesn't really have the rushing ability, but Justin Fields is more so of a runner. Uh, I think he had like a 440, 4-4-4-40, um, which is pretty insane for a quarterback. Uh, and it's not like he doesn't have an arm. Yeah, I'd say he has a much better arm than the likes of Lamar Jackson. So he's kind of just got it all. Like He might not be great at any of them, but he's very good at most aspects of being a quarterback. And he's just someone that I've been trying to hype up for a while now. Um, moving on. Frank, who are you taking at 103? Um, hold on. I'm just trying to get this. All right, I think I got it. You'll be able to see just the picks over my face here. Um uh, dude, I, I just recently, I love Kyle Pitts, man. Kyle Pitts is so good. And, and I kind of explained it to Jake. I might have said it on the pod before. It's like, if I need to take one player, let's just say my team sucks, or even if my team is good, like, I need one player, aside from Trevor Lawrence, right, that is going to have the best chance of wearing a gold jacket at the end of his career. I don't care about trade value or any of that bull crap. I am just going to take the most talented player. It's Kyle Pitts. You can make the argument for Jamar Chase or Devonte Smith. To me, it's Kyle Pitts. Like I, I would, I. There are a lot of picks here. I was between Jamar Chase, Zach Wilson, obviously Kyle Pitts because I took him. Trey Lance is around there, but it's just at the end of the day, strongest prospect, Kyle Pitts. That's fair. I can't really fault you, especially when we're talking tight end premium. Um, I don't know if that's necessarily what I would have done there, but I don't really disagree with it uh, too much. Um, Jake, you're up 104. All right, 104, I went with the guy that I have been in love with since the very beginning. We're, we're a big fan of his on the pod. It's Trey Lance. Um, I have him as my QB2. I've recently just hopped him over Zach Wilson. Um, I, I just really think his ceiling and his – skill set really fits this uh, today's NFL where he can move outside the pocket. He has a cannon arm. He really showed out at his pro day and just launched some rockets down the field. But, you know, I, I just think his upside is just so great. And he's going to be a top six, seven pick at worst, um, so if not pick four uh, in the actual NFL draft. So taking him at uh, four in a rookie draft is the sweet spot for me. Let me let me do a quick poll before we move on here. How many of you guys would take Trey Lance over Jamar Chase in a super flex league? Those would be the two people I'm picking. I mean, aside from you, yeah. Jake, you did it. You did I, it. <laughs> I, at the end of the day, that's going to come down a landing spot for me. I, the only thing is, if Trey Lance ends up on the Panthers or the 49ers, I'd go Trey Lance. Any other landing spot, I'm going Jamar Chase. I don't really care where Jamar Chase goes. He could go to the Lions. He could go to the Dolphins. If Trey Lance isn't on the Panthers or the 49ers, just give me Jabbar Chase. Okay, okay. Here's my reasoning behind this, and just hear me out. Quarterbacks that are taken in the you know top 10 of the actual NFL draft just significantly hold their value 
throughout their first two to three seasons in the NFL. You take guys like, you know, Sam Darnold, and you take guys like, you know, even Tua after a bad rookie year. You, those are guys that still have a significant dynasty value, even though they really haven't done much in the actual NFL. Now you take a, on the opposite side, you look at wide receivers here. You look at guys like Jerry Judy and Henry Ruggs, who were, the, you know, the top two receivers off the board last year, and now their value has significantly fallen after just one season. So you guys can, you know, debate all you want, and, you know, maybe they have a second-year breakout. I don't know. That's not what this point is. But I'm saying if you – and the opposite here is also you look at guys like Justin Herbert, who probably fell to the back end of your, for your rookie draft last year just because, you know, people had questions about him. If you took him, it you just – you know, gain so much value because realistically, if you do a redraft, he's going to go probably 101. I would assume 101 in a redraft of the last year's rookie draft. So the quarterbacks just in a super flex league, their value retains and they're the most valuable position on the field. So taking him over arguably, you know, the most talented receiver since Julio, I think just dynasty value wise is the right move. I, I, kind of get that jake but also from the analytical standpoint if we're talking jamar chase who has the all the analytics like the breakout age the bmi if he gets top 15 draft capital jamar chase is just as likely to succeed if not no he's more likely to succeed than trey lance because if you look in the past right uh, i don't i don't remember who tweeted this out so sorry i'm not getting credit but the four players that were drafted in the top 15 since 2012 who met those criteria were Sammy Watkins, who who was a miss, but then Mike Evans, OBJ, and Mari Cooper. So that's three out of four were huge hits. So we're putting Jamar Chase in that kind of category. And that's just why, I don't know, I just think Jamar Chase would have better success in that regard. I I have a question to you guys. Not that I think this will be Trey Lance, because I think Trey Lance will be good. So we're probably going to have, what, like five QBs go in the top 12 in real life? Somewhere there? Is that fair? Prob- probably. Depends on where Mac Jones. Top 12, yeah. top 15. Yeah, it probably depends on where Kellen yeah. Mond goes. <laughs> it's not very frank. <laughs> <laughs> it might be six. Yeah. Okay. How many times have we seen, or like, wh- how high of a chance do you think there is that all f- out of all five QBs there isn't one huge bust? There's, I mean, there will be. There will be. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Statistically, there's usually like one or two with the top five or when they go okay, down. Okay, but I mean, if you look at the receivers, there's always a bust first round receiver as well. So, yeah. like, you're, like, it's the same argument here. But but the thing is, right, it's, it's a lot easier to predict which receivers will be good just based on all of the prior things I said. Like, there's no real kind of statistical thing that you could look at with quarterbacks and be like, oh, yeah, this guy's guaranteed not to bust. Like, like quarterbacks, it's way harder to determine which guy's going to be good, which guy's not. I have Correct. a very and strong think... feeling Jamar Chase will be good. I'm not positive on Trey Lance. Well, that's why they hold their value. Because, like, if – like, this offseason, right, two – you wanted to go buy Tua, right? He did not have a good rookie year by any stretch of the imagination. It wasn't bad, but it wasn't good. It wasn't anywhere close to, you know, Justin Herbert or even, you know, Joe Burrow before he got hurt. So, like, his value was still, what, a late first? Like, his value fell from, what, a, a, you know, a high-end super flex first-round pick to a late first-round pick in super flex. So he retained... I mean, he lost some value, but he didn't significantly lose value. Meanwhile, a guy like Jerry Judy, what are you paying for Jerry Judy right now? You had to take him at probably 106 last year. Like, what did what is he worth now? Probably yeah, like, but, uh, again, the, really those are those are guys that you kind of want to avoid. It's the Devonte Smith. That like he's kind of in that oh, Devonte Smith off. range. It's it's true. <laughs> we, we know we it's know you're true. avoiding Devonte Smith. And not only that, but like. Just, just look a couple years ago. Daniel yeah, it's Jones. like the Rashad Batemans. You know? right, right, right. <laughs> da- da- Daniel Jones all was right. picked. Daniel Jones was right, picked six. Daniel let's Jones was picked six, and we've seen how, he, how much value he's lost. All right, yeah, moving right, on. Right, but Daniel Jones was wasn't a whatever, whatever. He was picked. Six. Honestly, we should we should look at the quarterback success rate drafted by old ass GMs. And see if that has any correlation to... to Probably does. Probably does. (laughs) Probably. Anyways, back to the mock. 
105, I just went with the guy that we were we were talking about. I took Jamar Chase here. I think he's you know the most talented wide receiver to come out since Julio Jones probably. So I just think he. I'm not gonna say can't miss, but I think he is a a very good prospect here. That was just very funny though that you just had to do all that <laughs> defending of Trey Lance. Listen, that, that was listen, that, was, that was a nice back to back. Trey Lance <laughs> and Jamar Chase is a nice back to back get. I mean, listen, like they're both fantastic prospects, but like the 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 ceiling of you know a top end quarterback is just so great here. Like you look what it, the value is on to trade for a Justin Herbert, even compared to like an AJ Brown. It, they're significantly different, and they're both very young and, and, and very good at their own position. So That would probably be my four and five pick also. I just don't know which order I would choose. Wow. Yeah. All right, well, at 106, I'm going to be taking the guy that seems to be getting no love, and that's Zach Wilson. Um, this was a guy yeah. I was considering at 103, so I felt like it made too much sense to take him at 106. Realistically... Coming into the mock, I was looking at landing Javante Williams at this pick, but I didn't. I, I don't know why I didn't expect Zach Wilson to be on here. I, I for some reason I just didn't think he was going to be there at 106. So I was just like kind of a little shocked. It's just kind of that whole argument that Jake was saying with Trey Lance. When you're picking 106 and you got a guy that might be going number two overall, it looks like there's just too much upside. To, to take Javante Williams, who a lot of people think is going to be a second-round running back prospect over him. Even though I love Javante Williams, it, at the end of the day, you, you do, like, I'm a film guy. You have to take the analytics into a little bit of perspective, the positional value a little bit into perspective. So I think Zach Wilson just made too much sense for me at 106 here. Can, can Completely you agree. Can you there? Uh, I, dude, the board. <laughs> the board, the board, the board. <laughs> I, I will say, though, I, I was really heavily considering Javante Williams and Devontae Smith. Those are the only other two prospects that were that I was considering there. Yeah, and I'm up now at 107, and to be honest, I kind of hate what you guys did to me. <laughs> I don't like the board, what just happened. I was kind of the hoping, board! Yeah, I was kind of hoping I would have the choice of uh, a Jamar Chase or Kyle Pitts and that running back would go before me. But now you're making me choose between the running backs. And I've been flip-flopping a lot, been really wishy-washy on this. Uh, the only thing I've been consistent on is keeping Najee Harris low. So I'm going to go and I'm going to pick Travis Etienne here. Um, the landing spot likely will change this for me. I'm not committed to my top running back yet. It's just I don't love any of them, but I feel like 107, you, there should be a running back off the board by this point. So I'll take Travis Etienne here. Lunas, you're up. Yeah, you kind of made this decision a little bit easier for me. Um, <laughs> taking Etienne. I I took at... Let me pull it up. At 108, I took my RB1, Javante Williams. Um, I feel if you can get Javante at one, If I got Javante at 108 in my rookie draft, I'd be really happy. Um because I think they're still very good. It's obviously, JT is right. With these running backs, some of them are so close to a landing spot. It's going to be really important to how like my final ranking will be of them. Because um, running backs are really dependent on their landing spot. But uh, to an extent. But Javante, 108, I would take any day of the week. And then at 109, I took Jalen Waddle, who is my wide receiver too. Um I know, like, people would think, like, oh, Devontae Smith. I personally just have Jalen Waddle slightly ahead, and Devontae is kind of like a 2B or 3 wide receiver in my rankings. So, uh, that I'm taking Jalen Waddle there. I think he's going to be an insane playmaker in the NFL. But I would understand if someone else, if they preferred Devontae Smith, would go Smith there. Did you see the reports today that NFL scouts have... Uh, Jalen Waddle is going to go really fucking one. early. Yeah, pe people are saying they yeah. don't think... Jalen Waddle makes it out of the top ten. Yeah, I saw. I, I, saw don't, I going, don't think so either. I saw him going six to the Dolphins. I think, which is. I think it depends on the crazy. team because, it, I mean, if you need a guy, it's like Ruggs last year. If you want a guy to take the top off a of defense and stretch a defense vertically, I mean, that's that's Jalen Waddle, right? There's no one better in the draft. There probably hasn't been anyone, even including Ruggs, in like the past three seasons. It's as good as Jalen Waddle at doing that. But I still don't think that necessarily translates to elite level fantasy production, um, just historically speaking. But then again, I like 
I was never high on rugs. I do I, like Jalen Waddle. Not not as high as you picked him, but I still like. I would take Jalen Waddle if he fell to me. Yeah, I, 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 he's another one that I'm tossing in back and forth though, on where I rank him. Sometimes I have him at like wide receiver three. Sometimes I have him at wide receiver six. It's kind of a jumble. Although I do wish Lewis didn't take him because again, now I'm in the same spot at one ten, where I this, think this, I'm just, this is this. This is this is the most disrespectful pick. It is of this not entire at mock. all. It's not at this all. This pick again, again. This is where I trade down. <laughs> let, let me let me have my piece first. Let me have my piece first. I'll get you later for one of your picks, Lunas. But at one ten, this is likely somewhere where I'm going to trade down, and I'm just going to try and pick up a couple seconds and get the guys that I really want. But like, if you want my true belief in what I believe actually should be taken here, it's Terrace Marshall, wide receiver from LSU. The one not named Jamar Chase. I just think he's got all, uh, you know, there's been disappointing pro day tests and everything with like Rashad Bateman coming in much smaller than I expected him to be. Uh, Terrace Marshall didn't do that. Um, He doesn't necessarily check all the boxes that the analytic people look for, but he he just seems really good. I mean, there's a question uh, Fred kind of pointed out to us. Uh, he does seem to take play out, plays off, although I think that's also a knock against Jamar Chase as well. Maybe the LSU wide receiver coaches just aren't really getting on them about that. I don't really care too much about that. Um, he just has what I believe is going to be the prototypical alpha. Uh, I was saying earlier he's what people thought Denzel Mims would be. I've been hyping him up for a while now, so I'm going to stick to my word. I'm going to practice what I preach, and I'm going to take Terrace Marshall at 110. One thing I will say, JT... One of our listeners, Joe Herbert. Shout out, Joe. We love you, Joe. Shout shout out, um, Joe. <laughs> he did say in the comments that apparently the, the LSU receivers are coached to take plays off. I don't ne- I, I, I haven't seen a source on that. I did look it up. Um, so, like, I don't necessarily know how truthful it is. To be completely honest, I wouldn't be terribly shocked. But for me, it's, it, it's even more than just taking plays off. It's... It's just kind of stretches of games that he gets minimized for, and just you talk about a terrible blocker. He is an awful blocker. But one thing I will say to you, JT, defending your pick is that I mean, you look at his his profile. I mean, the guy is an absolute stud. He's now he does have the top end highlights. Um, he comes from a great school. He's got NFL you know legacy in his family, so he does check a whole lot of boxes. Yeah, uh, I I realistically i i don't think he's going to like i think he probably would have been available a few picks back probably 202 is roughly where he's likely going to get drafted i don't have pick 202 um and i just like him better than these guys so in in an actual rookie draft i'd probably move down and pick him but i just like him a lot better than the other guys listed above him um yeah but to be completely honest though if marshall goes in that, the first that was where round of the i was draft, gonna go next yeah 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 and then, like, say Javante goes really late second or someone else in this top end. Let's say Trey Lance just falls to, like, pick 20 somehow, which I don't think is going to happen. But it could happen. What if he gets bumped down or something? So, I yeah, it's crazy right now. I don't think it's the craziest thing, even though I'm not a huge Terrace Marshall guy. Uh, I saw a mock where he goes to the Chiefs, and I just – I think that oh will un- yeah, unfairly, <laughs> it'll unfairly skyrocket his value. Like, he'll go from, you know, he'll be up in the mid-first round probably at that point, which – I think it's hyping him a little too much. There definitely is still risk involved with Terrace Marshall, but 110 out of a problem taking him. The thing is, like, I, I did see mocks where Rashad Bateman went at, like, 108 range. I think that could easily be replaced with Terrace Marshall if he does go to the Chiefs or the Packers or something. Yeah, exactly. All right, what's what's your pick, Frank? Well, this is a classic, uh, oh, my God, I can't believe that guy was there. Uh, it's Devontae Smith. No, nah, this is a guy I I love Devontae Smith still. I, I know I'm on the island on this podcast where um, Devontae so Smith You're not is, on the island. I, I still – I would have taken him. You're not on an island. I would have taken him before he went at 111, but like – Yeah, I probably would have taken yeah, him at 110. Yeah, but you didn't. I haven't had a pick since pick five. <laughs> okay, I would have picked him at pick five. What's up? What's up? <laughs> um, <laughs> no, I just, I, I don't know. I love Devontae Smith. I've liked him for a while. I've said it a thousand times. He's my Wilson. Um, if I can snag him at the end of the first round, I really like that kind of value. He's the kind of guy who's just, 
I understand the whole analytics bullshit, the BMI stuff. I understand it. So if you want to draft Jamar Chase over him, go ahead. But I don't <laughs> think up, that JT. that <laughs> shut you screw you, JT. Um, <laughs> but I don't think that th- that you should be overreacting to the point where he where you're starting to take the bait over him. So that that's just my opinion. You saying uh, Bateman's debate? Uh, I've I've sewered uh, Devonte Smith long enough. Everyone knows where I stand on this one. Um, Jake, what do you got? Uh, I'm up again at 112, and I'm taking Mac Jones. Um, I'm not the biggest Mac Jones fan personally, but my rule of thumb is if a quarterback's taken in the first round of an NFL draft, he should not fall outside the first round of the uh, of your rookie draft in a super flex league. Just simple as is. Like like I said, they're going to retain value. Like at best, you're going to end up with a Justin Herbert situation where you know pick 111, 112 last year in your rookie draft. Now he's easily worth you know five times that um or worst case scenario you know he's worth a mid-second like Darnold is and or Daniel Jones is and you don't lose that much value so that's why I think it's a safe pick here at 112. All right and then we're going to flip around then to the second round uh 201 who you got? I took the bait here Rashad Bateman I just love him I know he didn't measure as well as as people would have liked, he only measured about six foot and a little over six foot and about two ten. Um, people thought he was going to measure closer to six two, two twenty, but I still love him. He was an absolute alpha at, at Minnesota last season and the year before. Like I just really believe in him. I just think he's a guy that's going to come into the league and be like a Keenan Allen type wide receiver. You know, maybe not super flashy, but just quietly put up over a thousand yards and a couple scores, and he's going to be in that wide receiver one conversation. I just think he's a steady as they come here. That's yeah. fair. Um, yeah. uh, who's up at 202? Oh, that's Frank. That was me. And no one's got any thoughts on Bateman? No one's got I, any I, thoughts I just, on I just wanted to know, okay, so I guess, because I don't want to spoil who you're taking at 202, but I wanted to hear why taking Bateman over that pick. Oh, well, I took Najee Harris, so, Jake, if you want to... Okay, I mean, listen, these are the guys that I had at, you know, 12 and 13 on my board, respectively, and I that's exactly where we were sitting at, 13 and 14. Um, but, so we were pretty much on exactly on what I thought would happen, and I don't know, I just... Najee Harris, just, like, I know people are have him going, like, 101 in, like, st- uh, non-superflex leagues and all that, but... I don't know. I just didn't love it. He's playing behind like a unreal offensive line. There's so many weapons there. Like that offense is just OP as fuck. Like I don't know. I just I, give me the minute guy in Minnesota who dominated the Big Ten. All right. Well, well what hold, are you gonna hold, say, JT? Yeah. So first off, Rashad Bateman. He did kind of drop down my board a little bit just because of. Weird. I'm interested, JT. Who would you have taken? Because I know you kind of like are it, not crazy about either. It wouldn't have been either of them, actually. It would have been the guy I'd take later on. But, um, wow. Oh, well, it's actually I'm, I'm the next pick up. But but it, Rashad Bateman would have been the pick right after, to be fair. I, it's just like... Yeah, just saying, these picks are on the screen where oh. we're at, and they can see a couple of picks <laughs> oh, okay. ahead. So, it's oh, so, <laughs> so, so I'm, thinking, I'm thinking Rondell Moore at 203 if we're just <laughs> chugging along here. But now we got to backtrack everything. So 201 Rashad Bateman, 202 uh, Najee Harris, 203 Rondell Moore. My thing about Rashad Bateman is he tested worse than I thought. I, I just don't think he fits the alpha profile anymore. I do still like his catch radius and everything. Like, he's got long arms. He's able to go up and get it. I do think Okay, but, actually... like, go ahead. hear me out. My, my comparison for him is uh, Keenan Allen. Like, do you consider Keenan Allen an alpha wide receiver? Like, that he kind consistently of. puts up wide receiver one numbers, but, like, He's not like the flashy DeAndre Hopkins that's going to go catch Hail Marys over people. Yeah, but my thing... So, so yeah, that's, that's not bad. That's like his his peak is probably Keenan Allen at this point. Like, there's a point in time where I truly believed, like, Rashad Bateman could have been Devontae Adams or, um, why am I blanking, Des Bryant. Like, I thought he was in that category of wide receiver. And then learning he's actually, like, almost two inches shorter and, like, 20 pounds lighter, it, it does knock him i hate to be the tinder girl jt over here but 
I'm swiping no, you are. in the wrong direction. You don't hate to be it. You love it. You know you love it. <laughs> you <Yeah>. enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if I got my pick and I'm swiping, I don't know if I'm swiping on Rashad Bateman. I don't really know how Tinder works, to be honest. But, um, all right. Where was I going? Wow, JT, so, so then you don't know how Tinder works. I, I'm sorry, I was just I, that wasn't me. Did you do for fantasy football? That, that wasn't. What are you trying, trying to say? To, what are you trying to say, JT? I wasn't trying to flex that. I thought that was going to be like Belichick saying like, like snap face and face chat or whatever. Like I just don't know. How <laughs> All right, let me go. Let me go. I took Najee Harris. Yeah. Um, hold on. At two hundred two. Go ahead first, but I've got comments on Najee. Yeah, J, JT thinks Najee's a bust. Apparently, all you guys do as well. Um, I, I, I mean, I don't think he's going to be bust. I'm not necessarily the biggest Najee Harris fan in the world by any stretch of the imagination, but I would definitely not let him slip outside of the first round in a rookie draft. So I guess 202 isn't too far out of that. Um, I, You know, coming into this, I did not expect to pick Najee Harris at 202, to be honest. Um, I was looking at Rondale Moore and Diamond Brown here. But, you know, I was considering Najee at 111. I just had Devontae Smith ranked higher. So now I get to take his Alabama teammate at 202. And even though, like Jake said, the, you got people saying, oh, he's going to go 101, and, and a whole lot of the consensus would be, oh, this might be the pick of the draft. I actually think someone else got the best value pick in the draft over me. No. Did it happen yet? No, it did not. In, and in by the way, Frank, I'm with you. I probably would have taken Najee at 112. Um, and then like those receivers right after, or Mac Jones and Bateman. So, again, I'm gonna harp on my my Tinder girl JT about Najee, right? I have a lot of issues with Najee Harris. His Frank you mentioned it before his his uh, broken tackle rate. Um, but my thing is from like a like a value standpoint, right? Like Najee Harris is 23 already. Like he's the same age as Josh Jacobs and Miles Sanders. He's not like the same age as like Jonathan Taylor and DeAndre Swift. He's the same age as Miles Sanders and Josh Jacobs. Like, so We've been in the league for I mind you now going on three years. <laughs> no, yeah. yeah, I agree with that. But wouldn't you say so, that like when you get to the end of the first, like one twelve, one eleven, and even towards two o two, like at that point, isn't it worth that? The cons, like, do, at, at some point, doesn't his his overall profile and his upside outweigh all the cons. At, at some point, I just, I probably would have knocked him like a couple more picks down. Like I don't hate it right here, like right here is, it's fine for me. It, but it's just, I truly believe he's one of the most likely to be a bust. And if you're drafting him in the top five, top six picks in superflex, I think you're taking a very risky chance on Najee Harris. Oh yeah, I we all agree you should yeah. not. Like, top five, at least. Like, top five is a bit ridiculous when you have insane quarterbacks, Kyle Pitts, and Jamar Chase. Yeah, top, but I, top eight I don't know if is, to me is kind of what. Top seven, eight, I wouldn't well, yeah. uh, touch Consensus, him. he's going, like, 105, and it's just... Yeah, we're not a Najee Harris tough. podcast, apparently. But you well, do make a good on, point. Though, JT. Yeah. Who'd you pick up at two yeah. or three? Sorry, one second. You make the good point, though, of, like, at this point, risks probably are, are starting to diminish. Like, you're at the end of the first round, beginning second round. It's not as big. At 203, apparently it's on the screen. I can't see it personally, but I'm taking Rondell Moore here. Um, I've actually moved him up despite him um, testing smaller than we thought he was. Because to be honest, unlike Rashad Bateman, who I was kind of surprised came in two inches smaller and 20 pounds, like I knew going in Rondell Moore was small. I didn't think Rondell Moore was going to be a big player. I've hyped him up before. Frank's hyped him up before. We're Rondell Moore believers. I think at this point, like size doesn't matter right now. Like, I just think he can be an elite asset if, if the right NFL player, uh, right NFL team takes him because he could be used anywhere, basically. That's fair. This is this is the first pick in a couple picks I like. So it's <laughs> from me and JT. Well, I mean, no, I'm, just, uh, no, I'm, I'm just stuck so with you. I'm taking, stuck with you. Okay. Uh, I'm going to fight uh, you on this pick, though. No, because so, right, I'm on no, the next two picks are just horrible. I'm, I'm so about it's to fight fine. you. I'm going to you draw them Oh, you guys are hating. I love these two picks. I think these are They're steals. so bad. They are so <laughs> bad. One it's is, a joke. One is good. One is good. One is <laughs> no, it is these, horrible. These Both of them are horrible. Great picks. Let the man talk. Let the man talk. The greatest of picks. Um, so, <laughs> at 204, I took, um, Percy Harvin, no, uh, he's Cardarius Tony. Um, Percy Harvin? Put the clown face on him. Same, same guy, same guy, same guy. the clown face. Um, uh, so I took Cardarius Tony. 
I think he's going to go late first, early second in the real NFL draft. And I just love his playmaking ability wherever it goes, especially if he goes to one of those late first round teams like Green Bay or Kansas City. Oh, if he goes to Kansas City, JT, you are fucking done. You are done. You better You're pray. Ta- you literally just you better pray Nicole he doesn't Hardman. go to Kansas City. That's Nicole Bay. Hardman. That's the Marcus Robinson. Like, oh my <laughs> that's like, those are the same players. Kadarius Tony is not going to be better. He's going to be equal to those guys, which is nothing. That's nothing in my book. Nicole Hardman played in the same conference and put up nearly the numbers or the production that Kadarius Tony has. Kadarius so. Tony only has his senior year. There's no other production other than his senior year. All right, I got the clown face for you, JT. Thank you, Frank. I got it on him. Thank you. Put it on him. Ladies oh. and gentlemen, we got him. This is clown is clown I'm getting ready to for taking Cardarius Tony at 2 of 4. And this kid got a pass for taking Terrace Marshall over Devontae Smith. <laughs> Fair <laughs> point. You didn't <laughs> ask for the clown on him. You, JT specifically yeah. requested it. Yeah, I requested the clown. Terrace Marshall is in another <laughs> stratosphere compared to Kadarius Tony. Kadarius Tony isn't worth anything, in my opinion. I don't even have him in my three rounds. We could have gone 20 more picks, and we Kadarius Tony still would have been on the board for me. Yeah, you gotta when know your fl- draft. When, when, That's when the Florida- number one rule of dynasty football. Know your league. You, we <laughs> weren't <laughs> picking them. Any of us weren't picking them. When Florida and LSU played most recently, I wonder who had the better game between the two. Uh, I, I mean, I if that's what we're doing, if we're gonna compare like that. You're just gonna set yourself up for failure. There's I wonder no who had a better game translate. against the most closest to an NFL defense most recently. How'd they both there, do against Alabama? There's no way. There's no way that. that All right, translates. let's move on. Let's move on. We gotta get through so, a lot more. Cardi is Tony is two of four. Um, no, keep the clown face on because the next one's just as bad. Oh no, this is this is I, another. I disagree. Steal. I'm no, coming. I disagree I'm coming with team, that yeah, I'm coming to team up with you now. I'm gonna have to Look switch sides. Look at this. I'm taking Trey Sermon at 205. I have him as my RB4. Um, I like him a lot, and I know the Dynasty community is starting to heat up on him more as the draft comes closer. Physically, he's Good. a beast. Let, let someone take him. I'll take him. Dude, <laughs> give me him at 205. He did. I will gladly <laughs> take him. Um, I, I like him a lot. Like I, I don't think it's like this insane, insane... Obviously, there's a drop-off after RB3, but I don't think it's like an insane one. I think Trey Sermon can be really productive in the NFL. Physically, he's a beast. We saw what he did at the end of last season against really good defenses. I, If you can tell me getting the RB4 at 205, I'll take that. And he's not a bad pass catcher. He's actually yeah. a good pass catcher. I've been How saying many this backs forever that now. size do you see that? No, J- uh, JT, you were right. Like, I've been you on had a Trey RB4 Sermon for, for a while. while. Like, yeah. Dude, Trey Sermon, I even think that at 205, he, he might be able to go a little bit earlier than that. Have have we passed your best value pick yet, Frank? Well, are we still no, waiting for I, the best? No, we're actually getting to one of the two best value picks back-to-back here. Oh. Um, with your pick at 206, actually. You, oh, let's go. <laughs> let's go. I called you a quote-unquote rat bastard <laughs> after you made this pick. <laughs> yeah, so I guess it's on the board, so it's not really a surprise. Um, I'm taking Diami Brown at 206. Him along with Terrace Marshall and Rashad Bateman have been obviously other than Jamar Chase. Those are the main wide receivers that I've just been championing. I think they're going to be the – like. I don't necessarily know if they're going to be as good as last year's draft class. Like when you're talking Justin Jefferson, C.D. Lamb, T. Higgins, Brandon Ayuk, goes on and on, Claypool. Um, but I think there's a chance that they could be close in the same amount of value, same, same range value. And when we're talking Diami Brown out of UNC, who I think also could be an alpha wide receiver along with Terrace Marshall, um, you know, he's just that X kind of guy. I I love Diami Brown. I would have picked him at, you know, 203 probably if Rondell Moore wasn't on the board, but Rondell Moore was. Uh, not to be that. I definitely would have taken Diami Brown over uh, Lunas's two scrub picks. Yeah, well. <laughs> I, I didn't know Jake was now on, like, the Cardarius Tony A train. <laughs> Everyone no, was just JT. Tony hate train. I've been on the Trey um, Sermon hate train Trey for a Sermon, while. The Trey Sermon one's tough. I, I got It's going to come very much down to a landing spot for Trey Sermon. I don't know. But Kadarius Tony, no way. Get him out of here. I'm giving Diami oh Brown my God. all day I'm over. Going to all be day over. Unbearable. Once Cardarius Tony starts playing well, oh my lord. Oh, hey, listen, dude, we need, when we, we play this podcast, podcast back, guess who the only other person. 
person that didn't trash Cardarius Tony aside from you was. That's fine, Frank. Frank. You can, Frank I have Frank, not. Your I have been as your quiet as a deafening. church mouse. He knows. Your silence is deafening, Frank. <laughs> You're with us oh, or against just, us, and you're apparently against us. I am going to feel bad for you guys. We need I, to I, I, Tony I, truthers are being persecuted. Anyone that's <laughs> not against him is being persecuted. <laughs> we, we, All right, we, but let, can I can I go on for my pick here? Because yeah, hold on one second. Yeah, yeah, you on. talk about a value bet. pick, Frank. Frank, can we get a podcast bet real quick though? What we have to bet on Kadarius Tony as a podcast, like. We can figure out something. Will he ever be a top 24 PPR receiver? No. No. I, the, the issue, though, is like, all right, like five years from now, are we going to hold this bet for five years? Like, how long is this bet going to go on for? Okay, we'll will he finish we, over we should... under wide receiver 50 this next year? Oh. Uh, well, is that fair? worse? What, what do you consider worse, under or over? Like, like, is under as in wide receiver 45? Is that under or is it? Yeah, no, no, that's him All doing right. well. All right, so over. Give me the over on that one. We'll, we'll put it set in stone. I'm saying he goes over. Lunis, I guess you're going to say under. Why are you 50? 50? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I don't know what you want to bet on that, Lunis. We're going to have our first podcast bet. I already um, have one with Jake about Joe Mixon and Miles Sanders. Oh, I did not know that. We, was still, have to figure, <laughs> we still have to figure out what the wager is. All right, I guess I guess before the start of the season, we'll come out with a bunch of bets. Actually, okay, we can hold ourselves. We can think of it on draft night. But we can think yeah, of it yeah. on draft night. We yeah, see that's something we're go. gonna. All right, not to derail us too far. Sorry, Frank. What's your great value pick now? Oh, uh, this pick is the greatest. It is the greatest pick. It's Kellen Mond. Um, sorry, that was a terrible Donald Trump impression. Um, <laughs> dude, Kellen Mond, best pick in the draft. That's all I need to say. Two oh seven. All aboard, fellas. All aboard. <clears throat> that's, that's how you throw away your 207 pick, folks. Just saw it. <laughs> <laughs> Screw you, JT. <laughs> JT, right you're out here just clowning everyone. You you have the worst draft out of anyone here. <laughs> I love my team. I love my team right now. <laughs> I'm, JT, I'm kind of, I'm kind of joking with all, you, dude. JT. From Aside all from the fact that you had the best value, you shit. know what? He's you no longer to, have the best value pick. He, you, I he, revoked that title from you. JT. He is going to have to eat so much shit <laughs> next no, season. I'm, I'm when like all these facts, guys end guys, up being good. When Devontae Smith ends up guys, being good. When Cardarius Tony ends up being Percy Harvin reincarnated. When Kellen Mond ends up being Yo, let, let's let's speed run these these last because we are running a little bit right, late on the right. seventh. So I'll, I'll, I'll retire if all that stuff happens. Jake, who you got? Two oh eight. <laughs> you retire from public. Two oh eight. I got one of my favorite, uh, you know, second round picks here. It's Elijah Moore out of Old Miss. I just love everything about him. I think he can, you know, you know, work all three levels of the field. He has a great release, great hands. I just, I just love the player. I think he's going to make a day one impact on whatever team ends up taking him. Um, underrated player at Ole Miss here. I Wait, thought that I, was I one of the we steals. Gonna, I thought yeah, that was I, one I was going to say we were going to speed run this, but no, Linus is right. Like Elijah Moore, I, I think is he's one, one, of, one of those guys that he doesn't – he's not flashy necessarily. He has great stats, but when you watch the film, I, I don't think you're necessarily going to be overly impressed. But he's one of those dudes that just kind of checks every box, but on a very low-key level. Same thing with Diamond Brown. I just think that Diamond Brown – you can get sold on like his physicality more than Elijah Moore. Yeah, I like the pick here. I think that was a very solid pick by Jake. Who's your 209, Jake? 209 is probably one of my favorite picks in the entire draft here. It's Tylen Wallace. I've been big on Tylen Wallace since you know I first started watching tape this offseason. But he's a guy that I just see. He, he wins you know, 50-50 balls. He's a guy that... He runs tough routes. He's a, a tough mental guy. He was a you know Bolitnikov finalist two years ago prior to getting hurt. I just love everything about this guy. I think he's just getting back to where he was a few years ago after this injury. Um, I think he's going to start to shoot up boards based on where uh, he gets ended up getting drafted. So I'm I'm happy to get him here at 209. All right, I'm at 210 here. And, and Jake, I actually really like those two picks you had because I was looking at both of those guys for 210, but there was one last guy I was looking at, and that was Michael. I know, Carter, right? I, I know. I had him down originally, but I had I was hoping it. any of those three would fall to 212 so bad. You know, honestly, these three players, I'm not sure if they're going to – but even you go up a couple picks, like Kelamon, Diamond Brown, Trey Sermon, um, Rondell Moore. 
Yeah, just like skip over Carderius Tony. <laughs> <laughs> no, even Carderius Tony. I wanted to do that to clown Linus a little bit. But even Carderius Tony, like, that's why this draft class is really nice at the receiver position. Isn't necessarily how top end it is, but, like, and not, not even, like, the top end is great, right? You have two best receiver prospects to come out in a while. But uh, for a second year in a row, these, these second-round picks are just so nice. They're almost just late firsts in a lot of drafts, right? You know, you compare it to to whatever the J.J. or Sega Whiteside draft is, you know, you, you have J.J. or Sega Whitesides left, right, and center. Um, but guys that might even be better than him. I know that was a terrible example to bring up. But Michael... <laughs> <laughs> I just compared every single one of these receivers to, to J.J. or Sega Whiteside <laughs> while trying to say that as a positive. Um, that lawn chair... Yeah, that that was a rip arena. I'm gonna stop talking, but Michael Carter, good pick. I would have taken him at two oh five. Okay. Um Yeah, so here is um someone else. I've just been wide receiver heavy in this draft other than my first two picks. Um and I'm sticking with it. I'm picking Seth Williams. Um I actually believe it or not, a lot changed with Seth Williams for me. Tinder Girl JT back at it again. It turns out he's 21 and not 22, like just turned 21, which is a very big difference. It might not sound like it is, but when we're talking about wide receivers, that 21-year-old declare compared to 22, there's just statistically a lot better chance of a hit rate. Um, I don't know. I feel like I've hyped up Seth Williams before a lot. He tested really well, actually. Um, I had him kind of close to the likes of Tamori on Terry, but uh, he just tested way better than Terry. He looked better when playing for Auburn. I Just give me Seth Williams here. I don't really have much else to say. All right, Looney. Okay. Uh, so I had, two, I had 212 and 301. At 212, I took Kenneth, uh, Kenneth Gainwell. I thought he was the next best running back uh, available, which would be my RB6. Um, this is more just kind of a value pick. I know earlier in the offseason he was going mid-second rounds, like, and then a lot of the receivers have kind of gone off the board. So I just saw him there. I think he can have a pretty good role in the NFL. He's never going to be an every down back, but I think he can be a pretty good change of face guy. And I would take that at the last pick of the second round. I, I still like him as a prospect. And then this, okay, this receiver is interesting because I feel like he's just kind of fallen, like, out of sight, out of mind, were just so many people. Like, I remember in the beginning of the offseason, yeah, Jake wants me to stick by about I remember in the beginning of the offseason, he was kind of being mentioned with, like, that Terrace Marshall tier. And I don't know, I, I didn't pay attention to his, uh, I didn't catch his test or do I remember it off the top of my head, but pretty much I'm talking about Amon Ross St. Brown. No one talks about him anymore, and in the beginning of the offseason, I feel everyone was way higher on him. So I was just kind of going down the receiver list. I was like, oh, shit, he's still available at 301. I'll take that flyer. Of Amon Ross St. Brown. He was still extremely productive. I know it's the Pac-12 and everyone's like, uh, the defenses there are kind of soft. But at 301, I'll take him. When earlier this offseason, he was like viewed as a definite second rounder. It's just other guys have moved up. Yeah, I like that pick a lot, Lynn. Do not we know why he's I... fallen? Like why he's no one just... really... He's just not as flashy as, as a lot of the other guys, so... That's fair. Um, yeah, that's I think thing. he's just not that alpha type of receiver, but I don't know. I think that he's going to rise again because I, it feels like he's going to be a second-round pick, and whether people like to admit or not, USC has kind of been like a, a receiver. Um, like They've been pretty good receivers. A one. Yeah. All right, JT, why don't you tell us about the Jag that you picked? Not Jag. Not Jag. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take um, a text. I, a play out of your textbook, right? Um, my thing is, we have, I'm picking Javian Hawkins at pick 302, I believe I'm at, right? Yeah, 302. Yeah. And so, my whole thing about Javian Hawkins is, he's in that, that wasteland. I've got like five running backs that, just based on where they go, I can really just move them around anywhere. Like, I'm not specifically tied to a certain player yet. But if I'm going with like, who I like the most just based on a prospect, I, it's Javian Hawkins. He's moved up a lot for me. I, he's very speedy. Um, my only qualm against him is right now he's not great as a pass catching back, but I truly believe that he can change that. Uh, when he gets in the open field, he is quick and he maintains that speed, which is so important. Like he's not getting ca caught if he runs uh, and breaks uh, into the open field. Um, he is kind of tiny at 5'9", but he's 
you know, 190 something. So I, I just like JV and Hawkins at this point. It is a wasteland though, and I could see myself like picking three or four other running backs at this point based on landing spot because I'm not really tied to any of them. All right, I'm up here. I get one of my favorite picks of the draft, Nico Collins. This is a guy that I've kind of been banging on the table a little bit for this offseason. He's athletic. He, he doesn't have the tape because he, he opted out and was on Michigan. And if and there's any Michigan fans, you just kind of know that their offense was a big old pile of trash. It's where receivers um, go to die for prospects. But I also yeah. <laughs> I like this pick a lot. I he was, was initially him. committed to Alabama. And uh, I think, actually think he played a year at Alabama as a freshman, then transferred to Michigan of all schools for some reason. And this is a guy that he looked incredibly good at the Senior Bowl. I don't think he'll go in the second round, but I think there's a shot when you're comparing him to some of these other receivers, especially if you see a lot of the prototypical X receivers go early, and he's the only one left on the board. So, dude, beginning of the third round, I really like this pick. Yeah, I'm up at 204, and I went with a guy that I don't understand why he's fallen this far. I mean, Chuba Hubbard, if he were to come out after last season, I, I think he probably would have been a, a, a first-round pick in a lot of rookie drafts. So to get him here at 304, I just think is, is a, a steal. Obviously, he didn't have a good season this past year, but um, just on a dart throw in the beginning of the third round with the upside that Chuba Hubbard has showed in, in the past, I think is a, is a steal here. And then I'm up again at pick 305, and I took Dwayne Eskridge, who is another guy that I just like the ceiling of. He played at Western Michigan. Gotta love the Mac. Um, but he's a guy that is just fantastic with the ball in his hands. He makes people miss in the open field consistently. And he's a guy that I could really see just, you know, the NFL team's just trying to get the ball to him in a lot of different ways. So if, if he falls to the right, you know, offense here, um, in the draft that's creative enough, creative enough, I think it, he, he can potentially do some damage with his speed here. I like right, that I'm up, at, I'm up at 306. This is one of my favorite startup draft picks right now, and that's Khalil Herbert. This is a guy that is one of the only players that has really hardcore risen for me from pro days because the biggest question marks I had about him were his athleticism. He absolutely knocked his pro day out of the park. This dude, he's a really patient runner. Um, I, I almost wish he was a, a smidge bigger because I don't think he plays as big as he actually is, but I think this dude is going to go a little bit earlier than people expect on the draft, and I still think he's going to hover around where he's picked right now at 306, and I really like this pick as a potential running back, and I usually don't like taking running backs around this range. Yeah, I mean, I'm kind of upset that he took him because I would have taken him here. Um... At this point, I was just like looking at the board. There's a lot of players I felt like I could have gone between, but uh, you got to remember we're in a tight end premium league, so might as well take the flyer chance on Brevin Jordan becoming something. Um, it's a good pick. It's a good pick there. Yeah, I, I don't like. I there's such a huge, huge gap after Kyle Pitts, um, but as far as the remaining tight ends go, I figured why not just throw throw a dart at Brevin Jordan. Hopefully, it sticks. Okay, well, while we are in a tight end premium league, we're also in a super flex league. <laughs> so I took the next best quarterback available in Kyle Trask. Uh, if you tell me I can get Kyle Trask at, what, 308? I'll definitely take that any day of the week. Um, I, I think some team's just going to take a waiver on him. He's not going to start his rookie year, but I could see a team with an older QB just kind of taking him maybe late second or something. Like a team, I don't know off the top of my head, but a team with an older QB maybe grabbing him somewhere in like the second half of the second round. And watching him sit for a year and then seeing if two years from now he can play or next season. So I'll take that. I still like him generally. Um, uh, I know like uh, everyone's kind of low on him. His arm isn't the best arm, but I still like his touch, uh, what he did against SEC defenses last year. So I'll take that at the end of the third. All right, who would you waste to pick on at 309? I don't understand that. See, I actually like this pick here. I, I'm going to back Lunas where I can back Lunas, but like I like this uh, Amari, pick. I like Amari I Rodgers. either. I, I thought, I know obviously, like, people were like, oh, no shit, you had Trevor Lawrence, and it was like that conference, but I thought he made a lot of plays. He was able to, like, make a lot of plays deep. Um, he was able to kind of work as that number one receiver for Clemson. I, I thought he was pretty good. Um, nothing, like, special, obviously, like any of those second round guys, but.
But if you're telling me at the end of the third, if he's sitting there, I'm, I would take him. Yeah, I don't necessarily hate it. He, if, he had a good senior bowl. Again, we're talking end of the third, so at this point, like, the statistical hit rates of these players are just, they're so low. Um, yeah, you want to know why it's low? Because you got people taking freaking Amari Rodgers with him. That's mean. why. That's mean. It's like, oh, big school, good stats, get him. <laughs> so, I don't think he's that bad. I don't think he's that bad. So, but I so wanted you mean to find Devontae you for this Smith. One. We're talking Devontae Smith right there. I heard he's talking um, about Devontae yeah. Smith. Um, so sorry, right. Mar- sorry, Marty Rogers isn't some scrub tight end. Picking him at three oh nine. Um, it, it's, it's like whatever. Yeah, speaking of a wasted pick, who'd you waste a pick on? Okay, GT? hold on. So yeah, well, again, <laughs> we're, we're at this point, we're at this point, it's three ten, and I'm texting like, oh, like there's so many people that I could choose between tomorrow and Terry. Like, a, there's still like three or four running backs I could consider. Um, and Frank just goes, Frank is so mean to towards Jamar Jefferson, who I'm picking at at three ten. I just. I think at 310, like, the risk that I'm taking on Jamar Jefferson, who I think, like, does have the, the tangibles that he, he could be a starting running back, like, might as well just throw another dart at him. I, I don't really see any of the other guys behind him, you know, having a better chance at being a relevant player than Jamar Jefferson. So that's why I took him here. I, I was looking at Tamari and Terry, but I don't know. Just just give me Jamar Jefferson. I like that pick at 310. I just took Pat Fryermuth. I just, you know, I, I was gonna take uh, Tamari on Terry, but the thing is, is that I think that Pat, Pat Fryermuth, at this point in the draft, it's like the value just kind of matched up for a tight end premium league. I don't really love Pat Fryermuth to be completely honest. I'm talking about Jags. Um, but I did a similar thing with Cole Komet in a couple of leagues last year, just very end of the third round. And I thought that went all right. So I think that Pat Fryermuth, he's a good blocker. He kind of checks a lot of the boxes. And it's a better pick than than Linus would make in the third round. <laughs> mean. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jake, and wrap wrapped, us up here. Yep, I wrapped up this mock draft with Jarrett Patterson, running back from Buffalo. Um, he's a guy that I just like. I think he's going to be a consistent back in the NFL. Never going to be a lead back, but always be part of a committee. I think he holds some some value as like a flex play, a running back two maybe, depending on his situation. But the reason I like him so much is. He can pass block, man. He knows how to pass block, and that's going to get him on the field, and that's going to get him touches. Um, also, he's just so strong. Like, a corner or an arm tackle from a defensive lineman, they're not bringing this, this guy down. So, overall, I think he's going to be a you know pretty solid player. 